Ni hello. My name is Shizuka Dia. Shizuka is my first name, so feel free to call me by that. I'm an artist learning Live 2D for the first time, and I wanted to share my journey so far. If you clicked on this video, I'm sure you're curious about learning Live 2D too, so I'm just going to hop to it. First thing I want to say is, don't go in without an attack plan. If you're like me, you opened Live 2D back when the program was first launched, and then immediately closed it. To be fair, at the time there wasn't a VTuber uprising, and therefore not a lot of resources outside of the official manual. But now that there is, there's hope for people like us to learn. In this video, I'm going to go over a step-by-step -step on how I learned to do my basic rigging. Strap in, it's going to be a long one. Step 1. Time. You have to invest a lot of time into learning. I don't want to waste yours, so I'm putting this step first. The reason Live 2D commissions are expensive is you're paying for the time you save in learning it yourself and the time the actual assignment takes. Even people who know what they're doing can take more than 20 hours to complete a rig depending on the complexity. For example, Brian Sui of Iron Vertex posted his workflow of Yueko's model for Chai that was recorded over the span of 28 hours. I didn't watch the whole thing because it was 28 hours of content, but I scrubbed through some parts of it. I've laid out my schedule while I was learning everything if you want to grind for EXP. This is not a sustainable schedule and you need to adjust to suit your own needs, but this is how I learned. First, the cutting. From June 5th to June 6th, boot camp is in session. To get to the point where my rig could be like this. I somehow spent around 10 hours cutting my model to prepare for rigging since it's my first model. And I'm no stranger to the layering process either, it just takes me a long time. I was also watching cutting and rigging tutorials at the same time, so the actual time spent cutting might be less, but not by much. Next, the learning rig. From June 6th to June 9th. I started rigging on the 6th, but now it's the work week and I have other obligations. Still, I made time to practice at the cost of an hour or two of sleep each night, and I really don't recommend it. Try not to do that. Let's say each rigging session is 7 hours. I rigged while looking at tutorials and learning more about the program for about 28 hours in total then. From June 10th to June 11th, I did my practical rig. For my practical rig, I threw out the first version and then restarted after doing a couple of edits to my Photoshop file. The edits I chose to do was to separate my red eyeliner here and my lower lashes away from my bottom lash line. Because I learned a lot, the second rig took me only around 14 hours from start to finish. Not bad seeing as I managed to half my time. But to get to where I am, I spent 52 hours in total learning. If you're still with me, what all that entails includes... Step 2. Do basic live 2D research. Do what you can to get familiar with the program before even opening it. I started out with Brian Sui's live 2D videos in the background while drawing the illustration for my rig. I watched the first three videos of his series, and I'll admit I didn't finish because I learned more with a hands-on method. So after I understood basic terminology and felt confident that the program wasn't going to scare me into closing it, I moved on. All of the links of the resources I used can be found in the video description below, by the way. Step 3. Pick a simple model to learn with. I decided to practice on a chippy model instead of a full-scale model. Although it's a chippy model, it has most of the coloring style, the layering, and other aspects of my full-scale model in a simplified, easier-to-manage form. The entire purpose is to set myself up for success and give myself the opportunity to learn the program without worrying about the details and the pressures of making a full-scale model look good. Step 4. Learn how to cut your rigging asset. Now that I've decided on what type of model I'm going to use, I needed to learn how to cut it. The first resource I used and watched was Yueko's How to Cut VTubers for Live 2D Rigging Tutorial. I watched the whole thing, and aside from learning what to expect from the cutting process, my takeaway was, depending on the art style, you would either draw a VTuber with minimum layering or as much layering as you could withstand. Either way, you do the work at some point, so it's just about what you're most comfortable with. Yuiko worked primarily with a flattened illustration to start with because it suited her workflow better. I do some layering as I work to make cutting easier for me. For me, I'm used to drawing facial features separate from the face and multiple layers of line art, so it wasn't too difficult for me to just have the colored face on a different layer. If you're not an artist, this section is less relevant, but if you're rigging yourself, I still suggest learning how to cut so you'll know what you need. 
After gaining basic understanding from Yuiko's tutorial, I used Hime's and Arya's cutting guides as visual references for when I was working. Step 5. Watch a lot of live 2D rigging tutorials and workflows. Now that you have something ready to rig, it's time to learn how to do it. I started by watching Kira Amori's How to Make Your Own VTuber Live 2D Model for Beginners Part 1 and cross-reference with Kapako's How to Rig Your VTuber Model of Live 2D. What I learned from these videos was how to import my Photoshop file into Live 2D and how to create automatic art meshes and a texture atlas. For the texture atlas specifically, I followed Kapako's advice of using automatic layout and arranging the textures at 100% and 30 pixels apart. Then I used Siege YT's Basic Rigging Live 2D Tutorial Part 2 video to learn about rotation deformers. From here, I learned Angle Z, which is moving the head from shoulder to shoulder like this. And I've changed the positions of the rotation deformers at the legs after watching Hodusei's chibi workflow video. Unfortunately, that video is no longer up, but I can show you that the rotation points for the thighs are at the knees and the rotation points for the calves are at the ankles. This is so the model could have a cute bouncy up and down motion. For a full scale model though, I'm not sure if I'll transfer this over. And because I was experimenting with moving joints, I had to learn to glue them together using Raphael de Canicus's, um how to use the glue tool in Live 2D. And I learned through sheer brute force. I still don't completely understand the more complex glue tools, but I sloppily combined the thigh and lower calf, and either way, it's good to learn how to use glue. Now, let's move on to the face. I'd start at the mouth and reference Kira Omori's VTuber mouth rigging tutorial. Watch closely and please use the incredibly useful resource she provided in her description. Thank you Kira Senpai! I watched a lot of your videos to learn. After that, I believe I learned how to do eyes from Hodusei's chibi workflow that's no longer available, so I would reference Enma Akatsuki's live 2D tutorial episode 4 Standard Face 1 Eyes. Whatever eye resource you decide to use, you need to learn how to reflect. So what I have done is only worked on the model's left eye and copy pasted it and reflected it for the eye opening parameter. For this model specifically, I did not export the right eye in layers except for the eye shine, which is its own separate layer because I knew I was going to reflect it anyway. And the eye shine has to be on a different layer because when you reflect, it'll become a mirrored version, so it'll make them look wall-eyed or something. I'm not sure if this is the right thing to do, like to keep the eyes on one parameter. There's a way to have separate parameters for the two individual eyes, but I didn't bother because I can't wink anyway, so I'd rather my eyes blink and sync each time, which will happen if you don't separate the parameters for single eyes. I did not do the eyebrows even though I separated the assets because on some other models I've seen the eyebrows don't move too much so I didn't prioritize it. That's future me's problem. Moving on, I learned how to do the angle x side to side and the angle y down and up parameters by cross-referencing the prior videos. I remember specifically looking at Brian Sui's chai workflow to see how he handles them and since I used a chibi, I imagined if it was an android and just performed the angles I thought looked right. For a full-scale model, I posted an angle reference on my Twitter that I will use as a guide image for when I eventually work on it due to the jump in complexity. For hair and breast physics, I suggest referencing Kira Mori's video. Clothing is basically the same as everything else you've done at this point. By the time I got to the hair, I was pretty tired, so I didn't do it as detailed as I'd like. Since I'm a boy, I don't have to worry about chest boing boings. I also don't breathe, but if you set it up like how Kira does it, you'll be just fine. The angles of my horns and ears, I figured it out myself just by doing what I thought looks right. Um, after all that, export for runtime as a Mach 3 file and import your character to your software of choice. I'm using VTube Studio, but another popular one is Pure Pure Studio. For getting set up, please check out Arilu's um, VTube studio settings and adjust according to taste. Phew! So while you're buying all that off, I'd like to give you some rigging tips for a super beginner like I was. You can clip multiple IDs to one asset. 
This was intuitive to me, but I did find myself wondering if it was possible and thinking to myself, there's no way that it isn't, so I just tried. So you can put commas in between clipping IDs and there you go. Um, it was just in case it's not really intuitive for others, but it could be probably actually something very obvious. Anyway, um, I would say do all the warp deformers you'll need before setting parameters. Kira Mori so graciously posted her parameter hi mm, deformer, her deformer hierarchy on Twitter. Which I didn't see before rigging, but having your warp deformer set before working on your parameters is important. When I first started, I didn't have a warp deformer for the mouth while doing my X angle, and so I thought, oh no problem, and used the art mesh to deform it. What it did was move my mouth to the side when I faced front and center, so it was modifying the actual object as opposed to just the turning one. Um, so... Not only do warp deformers make it easier to modify the object, but it's also necessary so the original asset isn't affected. I lost about an hour or two figuring this out because I didn't absorb 100% of the information from all the tutorials I reviewed. Don't be shy to add labels to your parameters. This is embarrassing for me to admit, but I have to reference an X and Y grid when I'm doing my rigs. I've always been bad at math and concepts adjacent to it, so remembering which direction is what is just one more thing to keep track of while I was being hyper-focused and learning a bunch of new things at once. There's a lot of official tutorials and guides you should use, but as reference, X is side to side, um, Y is up and down. Oh, down and up, because in the keyframes, the left keyframe is down, the middle one is neutral, and the right keyframe is up and you should remember that. And angle Z involves rotation and tilting. Don't be afraid to start over. So after rigging for hours over three days of my free time, I just threw the whole thing out. Um, this was because I was learning along the way and since the file wasn't set up properly, it was going to take way longer to fix than to just do it from scratch. Not only will starting over give you practice in the steps you've already learned, but it gives you another chance to just get things right from the start. If you made it this far into the video, thank you! Now I'm gonna make it about me. I'm an artist that decided I wanted to do live 2D for myself and to expand my portfolio while saving lots of money. From what I've researched, really fluid full body rigging costs between $800 to over $2,000 depending on the popularity and quality of the rigger. I'm in no hurry to create content, so I'm in a really good position to learn. I'm not in a rush to get a rig done for a debut or anything, so I'm just vibing. Um, rigging is expensive, and I wanted more control in my work. I'd like to have many outfits and potential expressions in the future, and being able to add them myself was my main motivation. Regarding how I feel about Live 2D, I think it's a powerful program and I've seen people do amazing things with it. That being said, I hate doing live 2D, man. I've seen people learning it and saying they love it and they've gotten so good at it. I've seen a lot of people say it's easy as long as you practice and it's true to a degree, but it's very overwhelming to start. That's why I'm making this video as long as it is. Um, I want to give you a realistic view of the time and effort it takes to pick up the program. I'm not going to say I'm never going to like Live 2D, but it is a technical art skill. So unlike just drawing in Clip Studio, there's lots of basic rules to follow just so things doesn't break. I do think it's a great skill to learn though, and the results are rewarding. Take advantage of the 42 day Live 2D Pro free trial and be sure to start it only after you have gotten down to basic concepts you think you need for navigating the program. I'm taking a break from rigging right now because my hand and my neck hurts after drawing all day for my day job for 8 hours and then rigging my free time for another 7 hours for 4 days straight. Please take care of your health first or else you won't be able to rig more later even if you wanted to, even if you're motivated to. Spread out your hobbies and all that. When I pick up rigging again, the thing I want to do with my vessel to improve it is do more drastic head angles to give a higher variety of motion. After that, I'm going to learn how to do emotes and get bouncier, flowier physics. 
As you can see, my hair doesn't sway or bounce very much, and although I separated parts of my tunic, it doesn't flow how I'd like. I have a reference of how to make my ears move, so I'd like to experiment that and get that done as well. Maybe I'll do another video update in the future if that's helpful to anyone who's learning with me. Mm, all in all, have fun. Even if learning is difficult for me, I do take a lot of pride in self-teaching and getting a new skill. Good luck and stay motivated! Follow me on Twitter at ShizukoDia if you'd like to suffer with me. Zaijian! Bye bye!